Hello, brothers and sisters. This is uh, Charles Placid of Streams of Light. I am joyful. I'm praising God. And I say, I say, hallelujah. <laughs> the last words in that praise, uh, the yah, yah. That's the, the abbreviated form of the name of the Lord. Uh, the name of the Lord, uh, Y-A-H-W-E-H. -E and so, so it's, it's saying praise to the Lord, praise the Lord, praise to the Lord. Well, well, you guys, I have good news. Um, God, wow, praise to the Lord for this, this going on right now in the world, the the American uh, political scene with um, uh, the Supreme Court pick. This is this is good news, saints. Uh, no matter no matter from where you're coming from, if you're in Christ, or if you know those things moral to be standing for, you know you know then that that the saving of a life. The Bible says the saving of a life it is a precious thing, and we're trying to save babies we're trying to save children uh from evil people who who take pleasure in and in, in, in killing lives um pardon if you don't know this yet if you're still if you're a new visitor to this channel i'm i'm here to share with you the gospel of jesus christ and also obedience to that gospel as the apostle paul says that uh that we have to obey the gospel and so in that, we have to confess our sins, come unto Jesus Christ, uh, call him our Lord, uh, believe in him in faith that he has the power to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so we have to do that. We have to do that in order so that we can be saved. And one of those sins we have to ask for repentance from, the Bible says it in the Sixth Commandment. The Bible says it in, in numerous, numerous commandments, as well as uh, Ezekiel 16, that uh, he doesn't want babies to die. He wants them to, to, to live. Yes, we're in a sinful world, but he wants them to, to struggle in their blood and and live, as he says in Ezekiel chapter 16, to that baby, that baby that's just abandoned and left, left, to, left to die. And he sees that baby naked and, and blood, blood all about that baby. And no one, no one pities that baby. But he says, I see you struggling in your blood. And I say, I, I tell you to live, live with an exclamation point. And so, brothers and sisters, we we are in the mission of Revelation, uh, Revelation chapter fourteen, the three angels' messages, us being called to be Elijah, uh, brothers, sisters, and friends, uh, new visitors. I'm 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 speaking to, and so we, as being God's remnant church, the Seventh Day Adventist Church, we believe in, and we've been founded to believe, um from our inception that that keeping the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus is a serious thing this is our patience this is our perseverance our endurance and this is what we continue all the way through in order to be uh as revelation 17 verse 14 says called chosen and faithful faithful we know many are called but few are chosen says the word of God elsewhere but the Lord expects us, Seventh-day Adventists, to be not only called, not only chosen, but to be faithful to the end, to the end. That's the faith of Jesus. And also, I mentioned already in Revelation 14, 12. Well, good news, uh, a supreme, this is the good news, a supreme court justice and those those of you who who don't know supreme court justice justice kennedy he just retired um he was sort of good a sort sort of all right but then going flip flip flopping all over the place not voting for not uh 
not a a a truly committed judge uh in with the fear of god and and um uh you know the the lord didn't like it like him really that much so so to put it bluntly um we and being for the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus, this is the time for us to be in prayer, to be in prayer, uh, to surround President Trump uh, with prayer, to put away all political thoughts, all all political political um, voicings and pretenses and whatever, and to know that it's the Lord who sets up kings and removes kings it's the lord who sets up you know these rulers he calls them his ministers and so we need in in other words we need to vote as jesus would vote and vote confidently how do we know that the the light of with the light of comprehension from the word of god uh, the thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The commandment is a lamp, the law, a light, reproofs of instruction, the way of life. That way that we walk in, and that way in truth and life is Jesus Christ also. In John chapter 14, verse 6, uh, and I quoted Proverbs 6, 20, verse 23, and also Psalms 119, verse 105. Well, we need to be in prayer now more than ever. We can buy this and end abortion totally. Um, well, we can. I won't say end it totally, but we can. We can use this to fight um, defensively, and and I'm. I'm wise in 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 the councils and the testimonies of Ellen G. White's hand. I'm also wise in the scriptures. I, I don't know how, how far you... <laughs> you're on my channel, so I, I, I'm fully competent on the, in the word of God, in the fear of the Lord, and also also um, in the, the testimonies and the writings of Ellen G. White. Uh, the proof of that, if you, if you want to know it, you can, you'll know them by their fruits, uh, Jesus said. And not simply the channel, but... If you've already seen my other videos, you know, you know that uh, my video on the woman's ordination is ended. You can see that and you can go to my notes on, on, uh, on the writings of Ellen G. White. Never before seen writings uh, presented in a clear, formatable way uh, where that... It's it's what the whole church missed, in other words, but, but what the Holy Spirit revealed me. Uh, woman's ordination is ended. It's it's so on. You can see it by Ellen White's writings, also the Word of God. Um, and you can see also something else. You can see the Law of Moses. The Law of Moses, Ellen White, is enthusiastically, emphatically for, easily recognizably understood never before seen writings the holy spirit again shared it with me and made it plain uh you can see those notes right here on streams of light uh in my uh uh for seventh day adventist and and uh jewish adventist um playlist uh just scroll down where it says Israel yesterday, today, and tomorrow. I have it also in another another subsection too. But nonetheless, uh, then also, uh, so that's two things. Woman's ordination is ended. Uh, the law of Moses, it's for us. And to also uh, the feasts, the Bible feasts, the Jewish feasts, not Jewish, God's feasts. His appointed times, Leviticus 23 says, he's, he calls them my feast. And so Ellen White is again enthusiastically uh, for it and, and loves it. She loves it. Um, I have even the more notes, the more findings I can add into it. And you can see that, you can see that even the more clearly. But uh, so far my notes are, are sort of updated, but it's beautifully beautifully presented and you can see that evidence there too um and and 
whatever the more to come I'll I'll, I'll provide that but it that is is thorough thorough research and glory to God the Holy Spirit shared that again to me with me and making all of it plain uh I I say that in in all humility and by the grace of God uh well, these are the issues that were uh, relating towards 1888, uh, the most precious message. A.T. Jones, E.J. Wagner was pushing us untowards. Ellen White's also together with them were pushing us untowards. And Ellen White, though, for the much longer time, even before 1888, though, she was for the... The Law of Moses, since as early as I can tell, since 1875, uh, we saw that in the Review and Herald, and you'll find all of that in my notes. Well, she kept that fight, she kept that push, even the longer than them, and uh, so you'll see those three things all on this channel, nowhere else, nowhere else. And trust me, I know of them. There's there's nowhere else as precise as clear and as overwhelming the evidence that i presented another thing ellen white and how she in later years she turned against the the worldly holidays uh never before seen writings how she turns against the worldly holidays and she pulls them she she pulls she ties them unto being as close as she can unto the mark of the beast she even she calls them she she says it she says it's as as uh in this it's a, it's regarded as the same way in the in the same way as the Sunday laws regarded to Constantine and Rome it's it's regarded it's it's you know that's that's how they presented it from since the beginning Constantine and, and Rome did and so she says that quoting that in the in the great controversy um and in and many other books too well so that's four things <laughs> You'll find that it with my feast my feast day notes. But that that's that's four things the Holy Spirit has shared with me. And you guys will see it nowhere else around the world, as far as I know, and as far as the Holy Spirit has shared with me and told me, you will find it nowhere else around the world. The last thing is this project I'm still working on and it's almost finished. Church and state, I call it. Church and state. Uh, in other words, um, uh, the, whether, the, whether it's the union or the separation, uh, praise the Lord for the separation of church and state. Uh, but the true version, the true interpretation of that, and not the false interpretation of the, uh, some believe in the separation of church and state, Satan is crafty. He's going to break away, break away at definitions, at words, so that he can present his faulty schemes, present his faulty schemes and deceive and ensnare many. Well, he's already working. He's a wily foe. Well, church and states, again, never before seen writings. This is a masterpiece. This is truly a masterpiece like, like the others, but this is truly thorough i've never seen anything like it it is a lot it is a a multifaceted a teaching teaching series because it covers a whole range of topics relating to uh the seventh day adventist christian and politics uh and how to vote and um uh prophecy and, and re prophecy as in to the church and state context and i i don't know i don't know what i'm forgetting and what else but other other uh other um uh mythical teachings that that are just that mythical teachings in our church that are uh false uh, or mythical sayings that you'll hear you'll hear a brother say and say you know you're you're not allowed to do this you're not allowed to do that brothers and sisters i'm going to show you from the people they're trying to quote that they're not understanding it correctly and i'm going to share you from ellen white herself clear as day that whoo you the the truth the truth, we need to search for it as for hid treasure. And the truth is this. 
what the Holy Spirit has shared with me. You're going to find it in church and state. Nowhere else around the world, it is never before seen writings, stuff about Israel, how how Ellen White, she says it could have continued, the nation could have continued uh, by the Lord's hand, stuff like that, and, and, and didn't have to be destroyed, whether in 70 AD or, or any time, <laughs> any time at all, it didn't have to be destroyed. You're going to see amazing, clear, precise statements, overwhelming and numerous statements. You are going to find it. And so, brothers and sisters, the reason why I'm able to rejoice and say that, you know, we need to pray and we need to pray like never before for a new Supreme Court justice to be in the Supreme Court. Uh, that the Lord picks and that is blessed by, that could be po- po- blessed by the Seventh-day Advent, the Advent, you know, Adventist Church and, and Christian. Trust, you can, you can take my word for it. If you, you can take my word for it. If you already know it, you can take my word for it. If you don't know it, see those, see those previous studies I mentioned, whether on, uh, Woman's ordination being ended, whether on the law of Moses, whether on the feasts, or whether on the worldly holidays, see those uh, Bible studies, oh, pardon me, Ellen White's writings and Bible studies, and then soon also you will see church and state. And brothers and sisters, rejoice in the little things, be joyful in hope, patient in, patient in, in, in affliction and joyful pardon me, and faithful in prayer, quoting Romans 12.12 12, to the best of my scripture memory. And so we've got to be faithful. We've got to be joyful. We've got to be joyful in these little things. We know abortion is evil. It's a sin. And so call sin by its right name then. Don't try to muddy the waters. Don't try to murky the waters. Call sin by its right name. Otherwise, you disqualify yourself from bearing the third angel's message. From bearing the third angel's message. You disqualify yourself. In chapter 14, verse 9, 9 through 12 and 13, you disqualify yourself from preaching that message if you don't know that abortion is a sin and it's evil. See my playlist, Abortion, the Evil Called Abortion. We, we call sin by its right name. And brothers and sisters, we got to always put ourselves to the test of the law of God and the word of God. Not our thoughts, not trusting our thoughts, not trusting our own words, not trusting our own heart. We're not supposed to lean unto our own understanding. But we're supposed to lean on Christ. We're supposed to lean on God's word. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on thy own understanding. In all thy ways, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. Know him. Acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy paths. And our paths, it's only, ba- our paths, it's only by the word of God. Our path, it's only by the commandments of God. Our path, it's only by Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And we can't come before God except through Him. We can't come to Him even except through through the mercy of God. And so, brothers and sisters, if we have any cherished sins in our life or, or sins that we think are right in any weird and twisted, twisted way, Brothers and sisters, we need to repent. We need to repent today and turn away from those sins. Put it plain, put it simple, put it as clear as day. The light exposes darkness. And so we need to, exp- the light needs to come into our hearts, expose all the darkness and take out all the darkness. Purge out all the darkness and take it away from us. Take out all of our, our false thoughts our man, our manly and futile thoughts, and take it away from us. And we need to only be of the Word of God. We need to only be of the law of God. 
we need to only be as disciples of Christ. And what Jesus does, what the Lord does, it's always by His commandments. It's always by His word. His word shall not return unto him voided, not for any reason. And faith does not make that void. We know grace doesn't make that void. And we know liberty does not make that void. All We got to put down self. We got to put down false arguments by the Bible, by the word of God. And I tell you the truth, none of those things is greater than him, greater than he. And we all have to come before him in the judgment. And whatever cherished sins we hold, we will be condemned and we will be, we'll, we'll be judged and we'll be condemned by Jesus Christ, the one, the one who gives us all judgment and authority, who has all judgment and authority. The one who gives us his law and expects us to follow. The one who gives us his word and his gospel and expects us to be obedient to it. It's for our life. It's for our salvation. So, whoo. Brothers and sisters, this is Charles Placid, a proud and committed Seventh-day Adventist Christian to the point of death as the prophecies have foretold it for me to walk and to be uh, to that point. And so I say without further ado, the truth is the truth. And may we walk in it where we know it. And if you love him, keep his commandments. In Jesus' name, we do that. Amen.